My guest today is Tobias Koprovsky. Tobias, how yes. are you? I'm good, thank you good. very much. Do you ignore the camera, we'll just yeah. talk. Yeah. Okay, very good. What do you do? I'm an independent consultant living mm. in Nottingham, in the middle of the England, uh, uh-huh. close to Sherwood. Uh, working with the consulting and training across the Microsoft stack. Okay, I really like your Nottingham accent. <laughs> uh, let's say, uh, in you know, it's not the real Nottingham you're accent. Not, you're not a native of Nottingham. No, I I, I knew some some words from Nottingham, from the slang from the Nottingham because oh, really? I started learning. Like what? Like for example, when we meet the, when we meet someone in Nottingham, you say not hello, but you say why up duck. What up duck? Yeah, I like this it. This is the Nottingham. Only with the Nottingham accent. Yeah. <laughs> Of course, you have to have accent for that. I'll, I'll work on that. Yes, right. <laughs> uh, we uh, we're here at IT Camp, and you gave a session on uh, SQL Azure SQL security. Is that right? Yes, it was uh, secure. The, the the title of that session was "Secure Your Data on Demand Right Now." All right, but it had to do with data in the cloud. In fact, yes. SQL Server data in the cloud. SQL right? Server data in the cloud, as well as SQL Server on premises. Oh, okay. Because I focus on my sessions on the newest release, so SQL Server 2016 and 17, mm-hmm. plus Azure services, where the secu- uh, security is implemented by default inside every edition of that SQL Server. That's no matter it could be enterprise, standard, express even. All of those high level of security features are implemented and available, as well in the cloud services like SQL Azure Database or virtual machine with the SQL Server hosted in Azure. Okay, that, uh, security is of course a broad topic here. You say implemented security. What specifically are we talking about? Uh, you know, we have uh, we have a um, topic which is actually very, very important and very popular called GDPR. GDPR, so <laughs> I actually did a show <laughs> with our friend Rafael Rialdi yeah, about GDPR. About that, yes. yes. So, one of the one of the points there in that directive is that we have to secure our privacy and our specific data, which will be the personal identifiable data. One of the ways which we can do this is implementing security in our databases. So, mm-hmm. for example, if you SQL Server, we can implement um, encryption, okay. which will be which is very easy to implement inside the SQL Server. It's implemented very easy to uh, inside the Azure, but as well in Azure databases, it's implemented by default. So, okay. for example, when you create the new SQL Azure databases, by default that database is encrypted, as well storage which keep that data are is encrypted. Oh, okay. So the idea of encryption is that you would need some special key in order to actually read the data. Even yes. if somehow you could query, get to that database and query it, it would all be just jumbled garbage unless you had the key to turn it into words yes. and numbers. Yes, exactly, exactly like that. And we have uh, two options from the from the last year. We can use uh, the keys for the encryption which are produced and kept inside Azure by Microsoft. Ah. As well, we can use Azure Key Vault, which is the specific secure place when we can keep our sensitive keys for mm. an encryption and put them into the cloud in the secure box, which is um, based on the HSM, that means hardware encryption mechanism where is the safe box and we can keep that that certificate and encrypt and encrypt our data. Hmm, okay. And this uh, is a this comes about just as a feature of SQL Server are we on 2017 what's the current 17 version? and 16. 17 and 16. So and because those are the versions deployed in Azure we just get yes. them out of the box. And way. to be to be fair it came first from Azure because oh, this really? is the Microsoft way now the cloud first. So almost all of those services they they fi- actually first implemented a testing on Azure okay. ecosystems. Then, if the people are happy with that, if the people want this, because we ha- we of course have a user voice and so on and so on, mm. they implement this inside the se- uh, solutions on premises. Okay. What other features are available? So, for example, there is the transparent encryption, which of course is not th- nothing new because it exists from uh, SQL Server 2008. But the new features which we have, from example, from SQL Server 2016 is always encrypted. Always mm. encrypted, which allow us to choose the specific column in our databases and then encrypt that column using two different hashes, let's say that. Uh, could be random and deterministic. There are two differences because we not go probably too, too much uh, technically, but depends on which hash you use, which encryption you use, you will have a different uh, functionalities available inside the databases. But the main point for that always encrypted functionality is that your data in that specific column, which could be, for example, your birth date or your social security number, okay. which you have in the United States, 
could be encrypted and it will be encrypted inside the SQL Server database on premises, okay. on the transit to the applications through the internet, and inside the applications as well. Okay. So means even from the applications, even developer, they don't see that column with the data. They will see only the string of the characters, hmm. which could be different. Hmm. Okay. So it's the encryptions from the beginning in every single places to the end. On, prem, on, on inside the SQL Server database, in transit, and in the application. So that means your applications have to decrypt it. It's the re yes. responsible for your application. Um, so now I'm a confused. You, you're talking now about a, um, a column level encryption. Yes. But you said earlier that by default the entire database is encrypted. Is yes. That, is, that, is there a double encryption going on for certain uh, problems? No, it's not, it's not double encryptions because sometimes we have to choose which kind of data we want to encrypt. Sometimes we want to encrypt everything. Okay, and that's the default? If that is default. Sometimes we want to encrypt specific data in oh, okay. specific ways. Because, for example, if we have a standard encryptions, that data could be visible in the different places, for example, in the applications, in, if application not supporting that. But if it's always encrypted, that data will be encrypted everywhere. I see. It's a different solutions, different functionality, because we have a different business cases. Another one is the dynamic data masking, when we can simply mask the data the data will be visible for the administrators and for the people with the privileges. Mm -hmm. But if the user will be only the data reader, they will not see the data. The data will be masked, for example, with the character strings like couple of Xs or something like that. Oh, okay. This is another functionality which we can use. All right. Um, and these are features that we just can turn on through the configuration of either on-premises SQL Server yes. or Azure SQL Database? Yes, Azure SQL Database, a virtual machine with the SQL Server, on-premises, as well on Enterprise Standard and Express Editions. All right. And you, you said something earlier that really surprised me. You said that with Azure SQL Database, which is platform as a service, it's, it's not typically I don't touch the virtual machine underneath. I don't even think about the mm -hmm. virtual machine underneath. But you said that even with that, I can use more encryption actually on the disk. Uh, it's exactly, exactly is for that, for that uh, SQL Azure database, that storage which we don't have access for that one is encrypted. It is encrypted. Yes, it's encrypted by default. We don't have access for that one, so it's managed by Microsoft. Okay. But when I'm talking about the encrypting the, the data files inside the, inside the SQL Server, I, had in my, I have in mind the virtual machine oh, with the SQL Server, I see. which is based on the VHD files. Right. And we can use BitLocker to encrypt that VHD files. I see. Because it's very, very simple. If we have, a, for example, access for the VHD files when, where, is, uh, where we store the physical files of the SQL Server database, right. if that file is not encrypted, we simply have access for that data. I see. That's the, uh, what are the MDF files and yeah. LDF yes, files? MDF, yes, MDF, LDF, things. yes. I think there's an IDF maybe. I can't, I've forgotten. Yeah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, very good. Uh, what else? What else? Mm -hmm. um, of course, uh, the connection is encrypted by default the for that from uh, on-premises, for example, from SQL Server Management Studio okay. to cloud services okay. to Azure service, Azure SQL Database. So that means uh, so there's always there's two types of uh, uh, securing information. There's securing data at rest, like storage inside yes. of SQL Server, and then there's data in transit, yes. Like, uh, yes. which is coming across through through these pipes. Exactly, exactly. Uh, the other nice feature, which for me is very, very, very good uh, options, that every time when you create the virtual machine with the SQL Server or with the Windows, generally speaking, that virtual machine is not available for the any connections from outside Azure services. Hmm. That means, by default, you cannot uh, connect to that machine. So you have to create rules on firewall, you have to create a um, network security gateway for that virtual machines, and then you have to enable the traffic, for example, into that machines, hmm. only for into that machines, because very often we don't need to traffic outside that machines. So it's another point when the Microsoft created that functionality where the security is enabled by default and exists by default. Hmm. Another one feature, which is for me very, very good, it's from almost from the beginning of SQL Azure database, that there is a s list of the reserved keywords which cannot be used as uh, accounts with the privileges. Like, for example, SA, root. Oh, yeah. um, easily guessable. Easy guessable account accounts. They are simply prohibited. So you cannot use this when you create a SQL Azure in virtual machine, hmm. or if you use SQL Azure database, you have to use different account. 
I remember when the default uh, username and password was SA and then blank for the password. Yes. And somebody in my company hacked into our time tracking yes. <laughs> database. Inazure, because Inazure they, they that know, the, the administrator exist. didn't didn't bother to change mm -hmm. it. Blank mm -hmm. password. Uh, so these sound like really nice features in terms of security, but but they're not free. There's some there's some cost to them in terms of administration and maybe performance as well, right? Yes, administration of course is the cost which we always have, and it's very very important that we as a developers, as a database administrators, even as a um, IT pro, we have to adapt for the changes which we have. Right. That means we cannot stay with the old version of the SQL Server 2005 and looking how it works and so on and so on. We need to go with the new for the new for the new functionalities because they are available for us. This is the one of the, the one of the case. The second, as you mentioned, the performance. Actually, even you have encrypted data, the performance which we uh, which we look for the ben ben uh, benchmarks, they are not bigger than four percent. Okay. Sometimes are even even much 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 smaller. Mm -hmm. And you know because we use the different functionalities, we have a much faster memory, we have a much faster CPU, mm -hmm. we have a SSD disks, mm -hmm. which give us extra performance. So even we add that encryption for that databases. Still, that performance is, is, is pretty good. Of course, that could be some of those scenarios when we see, yes, because we have a millions or hundreds of millions of the rows. At the beginning, when we start encryptions, of course, we use the CPU. It always will be some kind of performance, um, maybe not issue, but we can see this in the monitoring systems when we make a backup and restore and we use encryption as well and we use the compression. This is the high usage of the CPU. This is natural process, of course. Mm -hmm. But in the normal operational operational day, there is almost not visible that 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 performance problems. Okay, so these features are are they've been implemented, but this is the cloud. With the cloud, it moves very fast. New features come along all the time. Yes. What's um? How do people keep up with that? How can they learn this stuff? Ha. Huh. One of the good place is going for that conferences like this. Like IT, IT camp, camp here, here in yes. Cluj. In Cluj. Uh, which we're visiting for many, for many years. Mm -hmm. Going for any kind of events, there is a lot of events which are free around the, around the world. Mm -hmm. From the SQL perspective, there, they are of course SQL Saturdays. Yep. This tomorrow will be the SQL Saturday. I'm going to Timisoara, which is not that far away from Cluj, but it will be seven different SQL Saturdays tomorrow around the world. Ah. So this is the free event when you can go and learn and hear the sessions and meet the people and ask the questions and very, very often you can find some of those sessions. In almost every country we have uh, some of those community events, community driven events, uh, which will be different, not only for SQL Server, could be as well for SharePoint, for Linux, for different, different options. We can go for the user meeting groups, which are very, very popular in many places. We have, of course, Microsoft Virtual Academy, where mm -hmm. you can see that a lot of uh, sessions and a lot of um, um, trainings for free. We can go for YouTube. So, for example, I saw that you have uh, hundreds of episodes of that oh, interviews. Yeah. <laughs> Some of them are really good. Yes. <laughs> As well, we have now Channel 9, which migrated to YouTube. Yeah. So it's widely open. There is a lot of conferences which simply um, post, after the conference, they post materials. For example, Microsoft Ignite. Uh, past summit, yeah. um, IT Camp as well. They mm -hmm. pu they published uh, some of those sessions from the previous conferences, so it's visible to on YouTube or Vimeo, for example. A lot, a lot of places. My problem only, of course, newsletters, website, blogs, and so on. So on. my only problem with this is that I personally do not have enough time to yeah. learn about all of those things. Me too. <laughs> yes, that's the my problem. Yeah. Are you are you writing about this? Are you blogging about? Yes, SQL I'm blogging Server? from time to time. Actually, for the last two or three months, I almost stopped because I simply don't have don't have time. But but yes, I have uh, five blogs actually. Five blogs. Yes, probably I will make some merging options soon <laughs> uh, with that one because I simply do not have time for providing all of those. Okay, uh -huh. two are uh, professionals and three are more private, let's say. Oh, okay, how about the, can you tell us the URL of the professional ones? Yes, uh, this is my uh, my name, it's, which is the Koprovskit, okay. with the T at the end, dot EU, like IT. slash, yeah, like IT, mm -hmm. dot EU, slash geek. So it's very, very simple. Excellent. Tobias, thank you so much. Thank you very much, thank you.
thank you very much for hosting me at this very great interview. I saw that there is uh, hundreds of episodes with the Technology and Friends interviews. I'm really sad that I didn't saw those interviews before, so I'm <laughs> going to spend some time uh, probably downloading or live, watching online uh, for, from, the, from the YouTube and of course sharing with the other friends which are very, very close to the technology.